Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. Today we'll move on to the second topic in Chapter 4, Recovery. As always, we'll be following learning objectives straight from the Cambridge exam syllabus so that you can be sure that you're learning only the information you need to know for your final exam. Our learning objectives today are to understand the terms oxygen debt and epoch, to explain how oxygen is used to remove lactic acid from the body, and to outline the factors affecting recovery time. In our last lesson, we learned about anaerobic respiration, where glucose is converted into energy or ATP, and lactic acid is produced as a byproduct. This type of respiration occurs when we produce high intensity work, and lactic acid quickly accumulates in the muscle cells until they can no longer function correctly. Lactic acid must be removed before the muscles can function correctly again, and this process of recovery is the main focal point for today's lesson. So how is lactic acid removed from the body? Put simply, oxygen combines with lactic acid, converting it into water, carbon dioxide, and a small quantity of glucose. The water is excreted in the urine or used elsewhere in the body, carbon dioxide is transported to the lungs and exhaled, while the glucose can be used as a fuel source for further energy production. So oxygen is the key factor here, and a demand for it will remain until all the lactic acid has been broken down and removed. The total amount of oxygen needed to bring the body back to its resting state is known as oxygen debt, or the oxygen that needs to be repaid after anaerobic exercise. In order to repay this debt, we need to consume and transport more oxygen than usual to the impaired muscle tissue, hence why heart rate and breathing rate remain elevated for some time when recovering from a sprint. This leads us to our second term, epoch, or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. EPOC can be defined as the process of taking in the additional oxygen needed by the body's cells to remove the lactic acid created by anaerobic respiration. To achieve EPOC, both cardiac output and minute ventilation go up, serving to draw more oxygen from the atmosphere into the bloodstream and speeding up the rate of blood transportation. If you need to recap these key terms, you can find links to the relevant videos down in the description. Now that we've covered our first two learning objectives, all that remains is to outline the factors that affect recovery time. The ability to recover quickly is of course an essential attribute for those who wish to compete at a high level, and you need to be able to name each of the following factors and explain their impact on recovery time. Our first factor is overall strength and fitness. Essentially, the stronger your muscles are, the faster they'll be at absorbing the oxygen necessary to break down the lactic acid, meaning oxygen debt can be paid back more quickly. Number two is genetics, and some people simply inherit the ability to recover more quickly from their parents, while others naturally take longer for their bodies to return to a resting state. Next, we have age, and unsurprisingly, older people tend to take longer to recover. The efficiency of their cardiovascular and respiratory systems decline over time, limiting their ability to deliver oxygen to those fatigued muscle cells. Gender also plays a significant role, and studies have shown that women tend to have a greater resistance to fatigue than males, particularly at low to moderate intensities. Sleep is our fifth factor, but it's not only how long you sleep for that can affect your recovery rate. Quality sleep helps the body to recover both physically and mentally, while poor or interrupted sleep has the opposite effect. The final factor is your level of aerobic fitness. Endurance athletes tend to have larger hearts and stronger cardiac muscle, enabling them to deliver blood and oxygen at a much faster rate, thus speeding up the removal of lactic acid. To summarize, oxygen is needed to break down the lactic acid after exercise, and the amount of oxygen we need to pay back is known as oxygen debt. Our heart and breathing rate remains elevated after exercise to supply the necessary oxygen, and this is known as EPOC. Finally, there are a number of factors that influence recovery time from one individual to another. Well done, you've just covered everything you need to know on topic 4.2, recovery. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so as not to miss the next one, and help me to share this content with anyone who you think might benefit. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful, and I'll see you in the next one.